so uh, the, 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 uh, and uh, you all are aware of the different uh, uh, solutions uh, that uh, we are uh, uh, providing but uh, um, to proceed uh, with, with uh, this is the intention of uh, the current uh, uh, webinar. Uh, if uh, you recall uh, last year, uh, we had uh, two webinars uh, in uh, November in order uh, to try to uh, tackle some issues uh, related uh, to uh, um, provisional uh, version uh, 3. Uh, our, our ambition for uh, today is uh, uh, to close uh, the remaining issues related uh, to the KTV, but also uh, we are trying uh, to uh, we will open a new chapter uh, in our uh, discussion uh, that has uh, uh, to do uh, with uh, how uh, we uh, uh, approach uh, the uh, the profiling as aspect and in order uh, to um, uh, come to a common agreement and understanding and try to provide some guidelines uh, and how uh, to conduct a profile. Uh, based on an earlier discussion that I had, um, this uh, morning, uh, the topic is of a great uh, interest uh, under the context uh, of uh, data uh, space. So I pass the floor to my colleague uh, Bergman Noflan to, uh, to start uh, discussing uh, the issues that we have chosen to for today. Thank you, Pablina, and as well a good 24 uh, from, from my side. So uh, we will spend, uh, we'll do the webinar in two parts. Part one will be about the profiling. And so we will stop halfway and have a break and stop the discussion on that. So we, that's uh, the planning that we wanted to follow. And then we continue with the remaining parts of uh, the webinar of the topics that you see on the agenda. Um, and why we come back to our profiling uh, of DKTP profile building uh, topic is that during our previous webinar, we already had scheduled that topic, but that at the end, and yeah, we rushed through it just to give some highlights and some uh, proposals, but we found that this is uh, way more important, uh, should get a substantial amount, and that this uh, then can be discussed later on. Uh, uh, on GitHub or on the places uh, further on. Uh, and as Pavlina already mentioned it, this is uh, some question that we get uh, in the context of data spaces where DCAT AP, uh, yeah, how to profile it, how to work it, how to connect it. So it's a way more, uh, uh, let's say, questioning around how to do this right in a good way that we all work coherent with each other and exchange data and descriptions of data sets in a coherent way. So, our goal is to give first an introduction, then we organize the moment for feedback. So, what you have listened uh, and then say, okay, this I, I would like to see, or uh, this aspect is very important, or please consider this as well. So, we would like to have some live feedback. And then, based, uh, we can continue our discussion given that we have now this ground settling uh, moment uh, on GitHub. And, and we continue to work uh, in that space uh, to make and to give a good ground and an outcome of new guidelines um, or written out guidelines for DCAT AP profiling. So given that, um, so we have a little bit of interaction just from our side to know if uh, around who is around the table um, has uh, is currently busy with the question, I'm creating a profile and, and, and I would like to have some guidelines or some uh, uh, organization or insights around that. So if it's just to know from our uh, side, um, if who is around the table today, just to know if you can give it in the chat. So we say plus one, if you're currently busy with profile building and, and you want to have some guidelines from our side. Um, and if you say zero, then you are not at the moment busy or you're just supporting and reading the spec and using it for implementations. But if you're really busy with this, huh? just for information on our side to know who, uh, the current audience. So, um, what is the question? So we get this question, this high level question, how to create a profile of DCAT AP. And if we look to that, then there's a lot of answers to give and, and there are a few aspects that we want to take into account. 
One is that we want to provide specifications that are concise, easy to read, but as well where the editorial effort is acceptable so that you don't have to do a lot of work to create a profile. At the same time, creating semantics, creating, explaining the semantics as a consequence on the implementations. And then we want to balance here our choices. What is a good explanation and a profile that I reached lead to implementation, acceptable implementation efforts. So to, to take that into account as well. And then finally, and this is something very specific that uh, pops up more and more, um, and that we should take into account all as profile builders is that data sets which are described are not only described for one domain for the profile that you're working on, but in the context of multiple profiles. So this metadata description should support and be valid in the context of different profiles. Um, a generic DKTP, high value data sets, health, mobility, your uh, uh, national profile, how to bring that in such a way that when an editor of the metadata describes his data set, can trust it and can say, okay, I don't only have to do a bit of additional effort uh, to uh, describe this metadata or to share this metadata as well in another profile, in another context. This of work is, of course, leads a lot of discussion. You can we can go very very deep to very de deep details, but that means that there's this complex and that there are many opi many opinions and many approaches to deal with it, and we have to find a balance to it. And to a certain extent, it becomes as well an abstract data specification modeling discussion. And for that abstract level. We refer uh, so to our style guide. That is an, a parallel activity that we are doing a semic, uh, where we are uh, taking practices like the one here from DKTP and turning them into a more data specification guideline. How to do it? It's on a more general basis. So that's not only only for DKTP applicable, but for other domains as well. Uh, and there will be. Uh, in uh, the next, in the near future, a new webinar, and the, at the end we will share the date as well. If we look to the profile guidelines, then we have uh, questions that are occurring to it, and then so we are to start. And they two main questions that arise are how to indicate that some properties say that the properties use constraints on those properties of one class apply to another class. So the reading of that and how this is interacted, that's a question that uh, comes in different ways to uh, arise in different ways uh, to the top. And another topic is how to reuse a pro property or use a property that has conflicting uh, constraints from one profile to another profile. How you deal with that and what is the challenge on that? And finally, uh, so this is something that's always then is in, in, in the coming into it. So if I create a profile or have a profile A and another profile, are they coherent or consistent with each other? And how can we see that? What are the changes into that? Uh, so I'm going first on the first question and then on the second question, elaborating on that and then having some uh, proposals that we can use until where we can go forward and the ones which were already shared in the previous uh, webinar. So what happens if we look to DCAT as such, then we have on the in the gray so, uh, left hand side, uh, the DCAT specification where it said that uh, there is a DCAT resource which is subdivided in some other classes and some other kinds, uh, and DCAT dataset is one of them. And there is as well of a, another kind of a dataset which is called DCAT catalog. And in DCAT, uh, in W3C DCAT, what we see is this is very flexible, very open. There are no cardinalities uh, constraints and no obligatory or mandatory uh, code lists to be used. Uh, um, there's still a lot of freedom and openness. Uh, so it is only the scope that you find in which context properties have to be used for a certain class. 
Yeah, so very free. If we look then to our profile, DCAT AP, then we have to understand that there is in an application profile a space called within scope, the called the DCAT AP scope, and the non DCAT AP scope. Um, and to make it more uh, illustrative, uh, so we have as well a DCAT US profile, and we cannot say that the same data sets, descriptions uh, that they follow, um, that DCAT US and DCAT EP, which is a European application profile, will coincide. There will be many conflicts uh, possible between the two spaces. So these are two areas, two application profiles that, because of the regional dis uh, yeah, differences, focus and have different descriptions. And this applies as well for catalogs. So if we stand and start reading it and then and, and see if our collection, and so for all the DCAT W3C DCAT resources, and so if you say all the possible resources that we can have, then some of them are in DCAT datasets. Some of them are not. But from those that are DCAT datasets, if we do a bit of sets further on, they are DCAT AP datasets. And there are a few that are not, or few, I don't know how many, they are none. We don't represent them in this diagram then, so we remove them. Then the DCAT uh, catalogs, what we say is that there's a sub class and other ca categorization and it's somewhere and it's not overlapping or mainly not overlapping with DCAT AP datasets. It's not in our intent. And DCAT AP catalogs are subpart of this DCAT catalog. So if we bring this back up in a diagram style, then we can say that the DCAT AP catalog is follows the same constraints and same rules as the DCAT catalog that this is a DCAT AP catalog and a DCAT AP dataset are different things, have different rules, and they're not always apply the same uh, constraints. And that a DCAT AP dataset is a W3C DCAT, uh, uh, a DCAT dataset. And this brings to a resource. And we get this kind of buildup of the diagram. So this is what we can, if we bring everything together, huh, then you see the green boxes are the ones which are in our profile and the intended or the following uh, of the, where the rules applies uh, uh, arrows that go up um, that uh, that you can see and the different from is saying that we have potentially different rules for DCAT data AP data series as uh, DCAT AP data sets as for DCAT AP uh, catalogs Doing this, this arrow interpretation, so you bring the same arrows as uh, the W3C down on DCAT EP within the profile, that uh, means that you put an additional constraints and on interaction on that, and that is, we say, at your own risk, because that means that uh, certain constraints have to be checked that they are consistent in all possible cases, in all possible uses. Um, and we stick here to the simpler case where we have a catalog that has a number of data sets, uh, so DKTP catalog that has a number of DKTP data sets, and that those two things are not equivalent uh, and not the same. But you could do that, but then you are at your own risk. If we look to the second question, uh, so let's put for classing and reusing of constraints in a particular different property. If you look to a particular property, then you will see that there is a, a channel and a conflict that might arise. Um, so we have type in for DCAT dataset. There's a code list over there. Um, this is adopted in DCAT AP and in a profile I took here, for example, mobility. Uh, profile uh, wants to use uh, type as well. Now, if we do that, then we uh, can have an, an example as follows DCT type 
as EU thesaurus and DCT type mobility timetables as an instance for the same data sets. So we use the same data set and it has to have these two values. Now, if we express rules like there must be a max cardinality for this type property in DKTP and the, there must be a mandatory code list for DKTP where this uh, timetables mobility uh, instance is not a part of the concept of in, Intuit in that code list, then we create a conflict. Uh, so this kind of constraints, and so it's illustrating that those constraints can block the coherency, the compatibility from one profile to another. You can do the same thing for the mobility profile. Eh? So if mobility profile would apply the same constraints, then it might create conflicts with uh, DCAT AP uh, or other profiles. So it is uh, a commuting vessel across profiles. So we need to do some conflict resolution here. Uh, one of those possibilities is, and that's what uh, one of the proposals is, and that we choose a master profile and that uh, we create in case we see that there are uh, needs of conflicting needs, sub properties of those properties, and in this case, a type from in the other. And then you disambiguate, then you can have your own rules on mobility type with a mobility uh, code list and uh, expectations around that. The integration on this is still a DCAT, valid DCAT uh, expression. Huh? So at the level of DCAT, this is fine. It's not anymore uh, and, uh, something that is necessarily in scope of DCAT AP or, uh, or the Profiles of the mobility profile DKTP. We dis uh, we dis uh, disambiguate the two cases, the use cases. It allows us, as well as a side effect, to have shackle shapes that are independent from each other. And implementations for implementations, it is quite easy to have these kind of things implemented additionally. So, what are the pro proposals that we have as one of the conflict resolutions? to have the uh, DCAT-AP as the master profile and work around that. So what means is that if DCAT-AP imposes a constraint, the other profiles must follow. Uh, and what is, where is the impact is, of course, all the properties where application scope is very heavily applied, uh, like, for instance, types, themes, etc. Um, yeah, and if we have conflicts into it, we have to highlight this. Huh? Uh, and as a side effect, all the discussions, and this is already happening over time, uh, so DKTP comes more and more generic and open. Huh? But nevertheless, there will be constraints and we have to take a tackle on that. Um, this is the uh, proposal. The second proposal is to handle with these sub properties the cases when conflicts arise and where you observe all that, this is semantically correct with DCAT. It's easy for implementers, it's easy for profile editors, and it allows easy interoperability between profiles because you don't all have this conflict that is built in and that potentially might be if you change something on the constraint that you have the other one to impact. Again, as I mentioned, this is probably only the case for application scoped properties. Huh? Um, this profile proposal, the third one, is about the adoption of the in interpretation of this subcaps relationship in the diagram. If we draw this arrow, that means that we inherit these properties and the constraints to the subclass so that you uh, don't start to shop something from the uh, again from DCAT if it's uh, uh, with a less or more free uh, open interpretation as it was uh, imposed by DCAT AP class, for instance. Um, what we additionally as well use is to map, if we map it on the URI, that means that this URI and the semantics that are associated with this URI are meant and intended, uh, and so this is, should be uh, coherent. 
uh, and we will try as well and this uh, to use uh, not do not change anything to the definitions as the style guide says but use the usage notes to explain and to add uh, to the scope so this is in line with the rules or the guidelines we have in the semic style guides fourth proposal is that the property is if it is reused uh, then we have to see if it's fully reused or it has some small additions to it. Uh, so we have to indic indicate that this is uh, how this is done, uh, that there's repetition or it is small, uh, small changes into it. Um, so we so it means a site as well as I said before, if a property is reused from a superclass in another profile and there's no changes, this repetition is not needed. Uh, and the same uh, thing happens with uh, other profiles if we do it across profiles, but it's not mandatory. Uh, so we want to make it more visible and to show it. And we can add an extra column in this week, we did in already in the high value data sets, we added an extra column to point out what kind of repetition that has been done. And then we cannot avoid all of these uh, repetitions, for instance, or properties like that interconnect or data sets and services and all the, and the catalog and data sets, they will be repeated, they will, uh, but will not have no semantical change to it. So it is typically uh, just repetition into it. And the last proposal is that uh, we might face as a profile builder the challenge, the need to express a local scope, uh, so a small change uh, in the use of some uh, class and in particular data sets. Um, and we have we, we have been discussing a particular use case of this one, namely the, the data sets that are in the scope of a data set series. Um, that is an example where you could say, okay, we have some additional rules, constraints that we want to enforce on that scope. How we deal with that? Uh, what is the, the best approach into it? Um, and the proposal is that in that case, you can create a subclass if this local scope is small. Huh? So if this locally scoped subclasses, that's one. If you do the local scope, if it becomes larger, then we propose to go to a, a full-fledged new document. Um, so of course, this is a balancing act and to see it into it uh, and if it's needed and maybe sometimes uh, still the subclass can be needed in the other one, but this is, uh, let's say, a, a guideline, a proposal to make it possible so that we can have uh, condensed and readable uh, specifications. Oh. So this is when it's locally scoped and you need small explanations, then you can add it in the same document, preferably with a subclass then in that case. Otherwise, uh, you do it in separate uh, document. So, now, as I said and before, and so I've rounded up my introduction, I put everything on one slide, uh, very condensed uh, uh, into it, um, to give you first hearing feedback to it, um, so that we can have a, a fruitful discussion later on on GitHub to, uh, to, to make an, a good guideline and proposal section for that. So I put up the questions, the in short, the proposals, I hope that this was clear. We did not in, in, in that assessment or for every property and so on of what could these proposals mean. Um, but what we see is that properties which a lot of cardinalities or and code list constraints are the ones where we have to be careful and where this uh, Profile building and the cost profiling is 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 at risk. Yeah? So you always have to be careful at that point in time. We have to ensure that we understand and have a good semantics about what means uh, use this code list in the table of code lists. Uh, so the, we have a separate section on the controlled vocabularies to be used. Uh, we have to make a good definition on mandatory to be used. 
And then this is a more difficult alignment and assessment for every profile builder is the additional guidelines that we write. Uh, so every profile, if we start to write a lot of additional guidelines, those might contain yeah, cross profile uh, challenges uh, for each other. Uh, and we, we should try to find out how we can lift that to, uh, to make that good visible. Um, so that are, is uh, having said that I open the floor for, uh, discussions, um, and, uh, uh, feedback. Yes, Matthias. So thanks for a good introduction, Pat. Um, I think that, uh, one thing I'm missing from your presentation is uh, a good way of talking about what we refer to in the issue as an entity profile. Mm -hmm. um, inheritance between classes, subclass, we know that, we know how that works. But what you are talking about is inheritance or some kind of extension mechanism between entity profiles which is the parts inside of a profile. DCAT AP is a bigger profile. And inside of that, we have a set of entity profiles, one per class, basically. And sometimes we have two for one, a single class, like the, what you have talked about, that you have a data set in a series and, and just data set not in a series. Um, so I think we need that naming and we need to define what, what it means to be uh, extend another entity profile that extension mechanism, does it mean I follow all of the rules of the parent entity profile and add these? Can you shadow them, basically? That's the crucial question to ask. Uh, another possibility is to say that we can say that there is an extension mechanism, but it is more on the like of based on and then it's up for the human readers to understand in which way it is based on it. So I think that's the question here, how, how hard or how machine readable should the relation between entity profiles be? Yeah. Good comment. So I think that's an element we certainly have to take into account in just my feeling is, is that we should go to machine readable as much as possible. Uh, uh, that's, that's, uh, let's say my inclination uh, as, as a, uh, as a proposal builder, let's say to, to the tech. I agree as well, uh, but there are challenges. It, I know. <laughs> One of them being that shackle, for instance, does not support, uh, doesn't have a built in very clear extension mechanism. Um. Alberto has a comment in the chat uh, that uh, subclasses should be the ones with restrictions, that it might look self-evident, um, and not that much uh, the classes themselves, so not, not subclasses. So if I understand it correctly, Alberto, uh, you are saying that if you make restrictions in an application profile, you should do it in your subclass. As much as possible. Yes. Do you mean that we should, uh, Alberto, then create uh, uh, an explicit subclass DCAT AP dataset? So in our namespace, we have a namespace R, yeah, which is typically with prefix R5R uh, uh, created. Is that your proposal? And put all the constraints on those? No, my, my, my experience is that the the minimum restriction should be incorporated into the class and let the the specific uh, subclasses to to impose that restrictions because uh, while we think that this could this could be a good idea to have any restriction maybe there are some use cases in which this restriction is just a barrier so i i really prefer to be let's say lazy in this in the sense and let the, the people just uh, apply the specific restriction for their use cases. But this is a principle that you can respect or you can ignore because it depends on the on the approach. 
Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to to see the impact, uh, Alberto, in, of your comments. Um, uh, no, no, not, is... not much impact. Not much impact. It's just based on my experience in the yeah. standardization with the smart data models. If you impose restrictions, there is it always appear one use case. Oh, this restriction really is annoying me. So be, be aware of that. Yeah, yeah. So that's the reason why I mentioned that if for DKTP uh, in its role, uh, where it previously, as uh, was when it started, it was the DCAT profile for European open data portals. Today, we see that it is uh, the platform, the metadata description for exchanging data in European data spaces. That's a, a, a wider scope. As a consequence of that, uh, we will become more open and uh, more free with DCAT AP. Huh? At the same time, I think it should be room to be uh, giving direction because if we leave it all open, we can say as well, we have W3C DCAT and that's all everything what we need and we don't have to do anything else. So it is a balancing place to find for DCAT AP that we should give a European direction and coordination to, uh, to DCAT. Uh, Any other first uh, comments to this? Um, are there any of these uh, proposals that uh, you think we should rediscuss? We should reformulate explicitly. Um, I, I have a few questions here. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't see it. someone else's for me. Did yeah, uh, Ludger uh, had a hand raised, so let's give the floor to him. Just, just one question. Uh, this is Chongor. Um, so, um, which one of these uh, proposal actually talks about um, Shekel expressing the 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 application profile restrictions in Shekel rather than you know in the you know. No, none of the profiles, uh, uh, none of the proposals expresses this. Um, the, the, it's only mentioned in, let's say, implementation. If you write, uh, in some cases, it might facilitate the writing of shackles and make it more easy, so that you know that you don't have a conflict with another profile. So you you know that you're more self-contained. So the impact is more on that. Uh, Yes, but because for me, that would be one of the uh, most important aspects. And that's why I was asking if I'm missing something from this list. But I think I, I understand that that's an implementation aspect, but but I think that would be also good to put somewhere uh, as, as a proposal or, or as, as a, another proposal. I, I would I would support that aspect. I, by the way, I also uh, 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 Agree with uh, what uh, um, uh, Matthias said earlier about the entity profiles and naming them. So, are you saying that uh, you would like to see a proposal saying that uh, application profiles need to be properly expressed in Shackle? Yes, yes. I think I mean that would be a, a good approach because then, then, then. People can um, then basically that's not uh, people can decide which which uh, validation they, which which record they use for validation and they, it doesn't impact uh, the ontological statements on on the uh, in the application profile. So does does that make sense? I think we, we we can work with it. Uh, we have to, of course, see uh, Chongor uh, on it, but yeah. Okay, okay. Ludger. Thank you. Um, I have a question to pro about proposal four. I think you said if you reuse a property without any changes, you recommend to not 
show it again. On, I think it's, it is. There are, there are two ways to it. If you sometimes you cannot avoid that, uh, made, uh, so for instance, DCAT data sets. Uh, very likely in any profile you will reuse it because you have the relationship between a catalog and a data set that you want to express. So you will reuse it and probably you will not put an additional constraint or usage notes or whatever to it. Uh, so these are the unavoidable properties. Now, if I say title of a data set, that's an, uh, one you, you probably will reuse as is. Huh? Yeah. Then the question is, should you repeat it or not? Huh? Uh, now, for DCAT uh, AP, if we look to our list for a data set, we have a long, very long list. Huh? And then we leave it a bit over to the profile writer what to do with it. You can be created, uh, of course, the full scope for everything, and you copy everything over. But what we uh, uh, encountered that people, in the case of the high value data sets, were unclear of what is now new and additional, and what is, yeah, slightly the same, or what is, yeah, entirely new. And so this this variation onto it. And so what we propose is that you clearly indicate this that you indicate this in the profile in a clear way and the uri is not sufficient to give that indication that's if that would be the the uh, sufficient indication then we shouldn't need that extra piece of information so this is the advice is to make it clear and if you want to be concise you can drop it but it's a bit of um, the 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 feeling of what your audience you think needs huh? Huh? Um, okay. You, you... okay, yeah, I, I, I um, agree. You should make clear if you are changing something or just uh, um, naming it so someone who reads the specification knows he can use it without looking in another specification. But I think if, if the takeaway is if you have changed nothing, um, just assume that it that it is there and um, recommended even if optional so then we have a problem with the because in dkit ap we're doing it the other way around if we think about um, inherited properties from resource for example or the the catalog is a data set but there we, we say only the stuff we show in the specification is stuff we really uh, recommend even if it's just optional so there's a, a level under optional stuff that is there because it's uh, inherited but it's not even optionally mm -hmm. so I, I have the problem that this turns this uh, principle on the head turns it around okay so 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 in principle uh, yeah i understand so i say okay if it is visible in in the list uh, then you know that the, there was some discussion and then there was some let's say little motivation to to use it uh, yeah. for whatever reason uh, but it was uh, very weak because it is optional uh, uh, now yeah uh the here it becomes a bit of, of of double in the sense that if we really in the end nothing are going to change anymore so we uh we maybe have to find another way to express this in dkt uh, uh because if the list is just going and going uh, and there's no difference into it and then you have as you give uh, correctly pointed out for catalog there's a very small list and everything the rest is optional not visible what does that mean uh, uh, that we more are more clear uh, clear in that so i think writing that out what does this mean and how why it is visible or why it's not visible even it's optional and it is exactly the same as dcat that we should make clear at least in dcat ep uh, uh, i if we are clear in DCAT AP, I assume with the additional annotations that the other profiles are cleaner and clear, clearer too. 
So, so I think this is a good point that uh, we have to ensure that. I just comment on that. So, uh, I think what is not visible, it's not recommended, right? That's the it by default, right? Or shouldn't it's recommended is here overloaded. Uh, that we have a stage uh, of properties which calls us well recommended. So, it is here. Uh, uh, subtility between optional and not discussed, or let's say it is available in DCAT, but uh, no, we we don't consider it even of interest. Maybe that, that's uh, what uh, I'm saying. I mean, it's, it's not recommended. So I think we we were supposed to discuss all the properties, right? So it's not like we forgot one. So if it's not included, it means that. We consider it not recommended for that for for that class, right? So that that's how I would interpret it, at least as you know, as an outsider. It's not there. It means it's not recommended to be used. I mean, if you use it, you, we don't know exactly what what is the meaning of it, or if, right? So that that would be my my interpretation. I don't know if if that is okay to be taken on uh, officially. Yeah. The, the the thing is, is that we we don't know the meaning. That is a bit of weird say, statement because we know the meaning in DCAT, uh, W3C DCAT. So the meaning exactly. is exactly is yeah yeah. Uh, um, but no, what I was saying, it it, it is defined in in DCAT. The meaning is defined yeah, in, in yeah. DCAT at a higher level, but we don't perhaps the meaning uh, doesn't. It, it it is it is questionable at the subclass level, you know, for that property. That's why I was saying that maybe we yeah. don't know what what would it mean, you know, to say previous for a catalog, you know, <laughs> because the in resources previous is there, right? Pre prev and next. Yeah. But what would that would that mean? It's it's not clear, right? So that's what I meant. It's not clear. Um, uh, so and it's not recommended. That's why we omit it because it's not recommended. So that's my comment. I think uh, the good advice from a point from Lutger is that we must write this out and make this clear why uh, it's in in the specification. So this is part that we add to add to add into it, and to make a cleaner uh, recommendation. Uh, yeah. Yes. Um... So coming back to Shackle, uh, I also think it's a good idea to see if it can be grounded in Shackle, uh, how we can form formalize uh, profile, application profiles in Shackle. I know that there, what we discussed now, the difference between a recommended and optional can be marked perhaps via the severity um, and the validation process, although it's not exactly the right fit. Um, you could do things like mark various uh, property shapes and node shapes, the belonging ship to a specific profile to indicate that they belong to one profile. And then you build a new profile and you refer to node um, property shapes or node shapes come from another. And that kind of indicates that you are just reusing them in a new context and therefore they are as is already. You don't have to talk about them uh, when you are rendering a new big document and that would call, give you an idea of what to write in the extra column that is the P4 in this slide. So there are ways we can extend Shackle to, to go towards these proposals, I think. I think we need to go into details to figure out where we actually, where it hurts and if we can actually use Shackle all the way. For instance, this extension mechanism that we may need to override or shadow certain, like uh, if you have said that something is uh, recommended and they need to change it to mandatory, is it okay to use a, um, a shackle and construct to, to indicate this uh, because it has higher prevalence and then overrides, but what if you want to loosen it and what is the relations between do, those two profiles? So there's a lot of issues we need to figure out here if we are going to do this really formally. Uh, I'm happy to be part of that work and I would like to start that work rather soon. Um, um, but, so we note you. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
the I have a one point P2 use flow properties to avoid conflicts. I didn't fully understand if I understand that there would be a conflict. If you are saying that you are reusing and or you're extending another base or master profile, and then you cannot keep within the limits of that master profile. But still, I think, yeah, I'm not sure that we can always force people to use sub properties for that purpose. And I'm just thinking P2 could be a, something that stops this from working. And therefore, maybe the solution is to loosen the relations between the master profile and the sub profiles a little bit to allow this kind of. Um, yeah, the, 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 the thing here and that uh, is as well connected with, um, and this is a very, uh, let's say, annoying or complicating fact is that when you see on the, uh, the right top, uh, the, the overlapping uh, profiles in with the data sets yeah. is that if one profile decides to be very restrictive and it's not the master profile eh? so if not dkdp but if some sub profile is doing it it has the same effect on the others uh, so it's uh it's 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 it, it, it might create a conflict as a pro a sub profile you have to be aware as a profile builder about that huh? yeah, but, so but if... wait that's not true if you express your restrictions on the level of the profile and not on the class uh yes yeah, yeah 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 i agree but but the thing is if if, if we are strongly formulating things huh, then mm. we have to agree that uh if we bring it together and the merges results in a valid dcat view and yeah, that's the first that's the aggregation view but it might not be any more a valid other profile view we have yeah. to see how, the, how this is, is working and, and that's the reason why I give this advice or this proposal of P2, because it is a simple way, it's a clean way to, to avoid where this really might be very hurting. Huh? Okay, um, yeah. Yes, true. If we do it using classes and properties and RDFS or OWL. But I think there is a mechanism of doing it based on shackle profiles, because when you, yeah, whatever that is called, if you merge two shackle, constructions they will not interfere with each other because the nodes have different uris and when you're saying that something is validated according to one uh, node shape it's not necessarily affecting another node shape unless you're actually to... adding properties to those node shapes which you shouldn't do which brings us to the extension mechanisms between node shapes mm -hmm. Uh, but this a, is a much deeper discussion, and I I'm happy uh, to yeah. be part of that in another setting. Yeah, and it and it is deeper, and additionally, we have to see that this is implementable for editorial environments or not to see what is the impact as well. Yes, that. yes. Uh, so because that's we want to give the we ensure that the community can implement this and doesn't have to go to a big reasoning complexity headache uh, but they know simple implementation rules what to do and what comes out so that in the end the data sets get well documented uh, and easily shared because that's the whole objective of course uh, of this work any other uh Hands raised, first time comments. There is a comment from Agatha uh, about the Moscow method uh, that splits uh, functionalities uh, between main and optional. Agatha, would you like to voice your opinion on this? Um, sure, I can. Uh, nice to see you. Uh, I'm sorry, my camera isn't working today, so I hope you don't mind. I would say that uh, people who would like to operate within the market and regularly on a daily basis. They would like to have a standard to fit in without any specific uh, elements that needs to be improved or corrected or modified. People who are able enough to modify themselves the standard, they will do so without asking anyone of anything. And that's my private opinion that I based on uh, the regular experience. People who would like or ha have the opportunity to make things work different for them, they just do so. 
and that's it. They have enough Im imagination and skills to do so without even trying to understand whether a standard is or is not in a specific frame. So um, I would say that standard is provided for the people who operate in the middle of the market. I mean, they are not smart enough to change it or they are smart enough to change it, but they are, I would say, uh, standard enough to fit in. And that is why we don't have to provide us uh, detailed instruction for the purpose of some uh, optionalities. For people who are not so prepared, we could prepare the list of potential uh, optionalities and say that is going to be safe for you to use it as you are not so advanced user, but uh, be aware of the fact that it has consequences and that's it. And I would say that it is rather making order within the communication instead of um, starting from the, from the point that people are not aware of the fact how databases work, how uh, internet communication work, how applications and system work. I believe that people have the basic uh, skills to operate within the standard and that, that that's my private opinion we cannot uh, address the standard as to people who are not aware of the um i mean elementary and fundamental basics of uh, of the systems and i would say that we need to uh, make a level up for the purpose of people who are uh, in the uh, in the minimum range of uh, skills and abilities to provide them something that is organized and to allow people who are obviously uh, more uh, advanced to make whatever they want to make, knowing the limitations and the, and the structure and the characteristics and so on. And I would say that is uh, the first one. And the second one is that when uh, we are discussing the um, two dimensional communication between uh, uh, properties and sub properties, profile and sub profile, we need to be uh, aware of the fact that people who are uh, specifying things in a specific set of uh, characteristics and limitations, they are ensuring, granting the, some sort of guarantee that it is okay, it, it is verified, it works together as a set. So we cannot uh, allow anyone to uh, make, um, I would say, uh, um, some sort of uh, shared elements that will uh, destroy the overall nature of the primary set that was provided on the base of the sub profile and, and th th those sub, sub properties, because that was the guarantee that data is verified, that data is clean, that data is, uh, I mean, uh, in the right context and so on. So we cannot say, okay, anyone can say, uh, can take uh, some sort of subset and do whatever one wants with that, because then we may provide some sort of fake news or uh, non-verified data on something that is multifunctioning uh, as, it, as it is. And I would say that uh, just try to listen to the intuition of the users. I mean, the, those advanced users and skilled ones who are providing it data for, for their purposes and they are responsible for that. We, we need to have in mind the responsibility of the, uh, of the operator of the primary provided set that it is uh, done in purpose. So uh, the, the one needs to have some sort of guidance how to um, make the order of his own data to be shared with others but we cannot let others to uh, make a mess with that. I would say my private opinion. Mm. Thanks for this uh, opportunity yeah. to share my thoughts. Okay. Um, any other voices raised, uh, hands raised? No, no comments. Then I think, um, okay, so we can wrap it up and go to the break. It's nice on time. Um, so what is happening? Uh, so the goal was to go forward somehow practically with it. What does that mean? Is that based on this feedback, this first thing we have set some grounds where we're able to share 
first opinions on it. Uh, so we would like to create a new section uh, to wrap in a comprehensive, let's say, list and a readable section, creating the GetEP profile so that we have some hand uh, guidelines. Uh, so as Agatha already mentioned, that is say for those who want to go forward in a, in a decent way. Um, and then we can discuss that section on GitHub further on. Um, so this is uh, in a future release. It's not really in with the next release, but we will write and uh, make it available for you to read and to contribute and to give uh, feedback onto it. But apply as much as possible the good practices, which we already do, but some like the point that Lutko made to explain way more what is the difference and sort of add that already in. Uh, um, so uh, the last uh, thing, and I want to invite you all already that uh, uh, on the 6th of February, there will be a style guide webinar about as well on DCAT AP pro, uh, on profiling in general, but it is a DCAT AP used as uh, example and to an assessment onto it. So it's used DCAT AP to discuss on a more abstract way, uh, say what are the challenges and uh, profiling in the broader sense. So you're all welcome to, go a little bit up in the abstract sense uh, uh, what to do, uh, uh, where we will interact, of course, with it. So we will as well share a GitHub issue where we, or when, when the section is there, then we have the, the issue as well, where you can point topics to it. Or if you already want to share something earlier on, you can do it on our GitHub already. So thank you. Uh, so now we have a short break. Uh, five minutes. So if I look to my, uh, well, let's say it makes it seven, then it's uh, five, uh, 15, 10 on my watch. Uh, and then uh, we restart on that moment.
Good afternoon. You can see Jakub nodding, he hears me. So uh, that means I think we can go for the next part of it. Huh? The second part, which is a bit a look ahead, first of all, um, uh, to how we are going to create uh, the new release or releases in the future and work to work uh, towards in, in, in the future. Uh, and with a few items or topics, issues that we want to share and to, to get some feedback as well from you. Uh, first of all, we would like to share you a timeline. And this is uh, the timeline from the uh, alignment work that we have been doing for DGAT uh, uh, EP3 with DGAT3. Uh, it's already quite a year that we, we spent already a year on it. Um, and so today with this webinar, we would like to wrap it up and create a new release out of it. What we inquired W3C about the status of, of DCAT, and we got back that uh, they are currently processing the application. Uh, and I expect a candidate release, at least in the near future, to be released. If not, uh, 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 a real recommendation of DCAT uh, 3. Um, so, what happens is that by the end of this month, we will consolidate a new version. We'll share that with the community. As you have already given quite some feedback and some uh, uh, discussions that we had with the webinars in November and the online uh, feedback, uh, we, we will do a short review where we will ask you to give comments to it and we will adopt the editorial ones. If there's anything major coming out of this adoption uh, of this alignment and new version, then this will be for a next release. So we would like to go to a new stable release so that we spend now quite some effort with the whole community on it so that we have a new stable point in, uh, in uh, anchor to work, to continue to work and to progress on it. So this is the plan. Uh, and we hope that in the planning as well, it is, would be nice by the release time that we have uh, a stable, at least a candidate release from W3C so that the pointers and everything is stable in, in the world. So this is one of the things. So that's, I think, good news that we can move on and then we, everyone can has uh, a, a new eye on what is the new release of DCAT EP upcoming. Um, Secondly, we would like to we look back in the over the past year to our webinars um, and what we saw that uh, there were some observations internally in our team. So they say, okay, some the webinars tend to overrun in the sense of we don't have sufficient time to discuss the topics we have to cut off. Maybe we were not always as clear as prepared, uh, but as well, sometimes too many topics onto it and so on. So we would like to try to uh, yeah, get more out of the webinars, more out of the discussions. But in order to do that, we need to uh, look to how we can manage your feedback in a better way. And uh, one of the, the, the challenges for things that we would like to promote even more, although we already are a very active GitHub uh, uh, community, we would like to have the discussions way more upfront in GitHub uh, so that we come with the almost the final agreed proposition to the community or even can say we have resolved it on GitHub uh, so that we can reduce the number of issues, the number of to be discussed topics in the webinars. So we can give more time to what really matters or to where we need to, to do some groundwork uh, for you. Um, so we already started and you saw this uh, in the previous webinars as well appearing that we sometimes labeled uh, uh, issues 
going to next webinar. So this is one of the things that we are going to do is to try to use the labels to give already the community the indication what is upcoming into the webinar without a full agenda. Uh, so our agenda is always a bit uh, similar, resolving issues uh, going forward and sometimes a bigger topic like profile building uh, as today. But what we will really try to then to put up with the next webinar are topics we want to raise attention to you as a community and have some online orally feedback or to give some uh, an oral context so that the discussion can continue on GitHub again. Um, and of course, we will try and as a side effect that we can give you an overview of which are the issues that we really closed or we uh, tackled during uh, then this uh, for, uh, yeah, webinar or what we really have being concluded. We already have the meeting minutes, but maybe it's good that we even make this more clear that in the GitHub that these are the topics that we really have addressed and so on. I will show you some labels that we will address uh, for that to go further on. Um, at the same time, with the webinars, uh, so the community interaction or uh, and, and there, there's still a demand for, uh, let's say, to more easier and quicker releases of our uh, war, uh, of the DKTP. We have now accumulated some align the whole alignments and then accumulated into that additional issues. So, it, yeah, it's somebody we would like to give a release and we want to do this more frequently in a, some way of have at least facilitate that we can do this and for that um, we have to uh, um, uh, we want to identify this uh, the late this the issues that are fixed with the status fixed and show this in a draft release so that means if you see the label status fixed, then you know that this topic has been addressed in a draft release and you can already look at it. And that is the future upcoming release. Uh, so with the draft release, you know, okay, we are, uh, this is what is coming. It's not carved in stone yet, but you know the direction. And normally if no other big issues arise, this will be the next uh, release. Um, sometimes we have received issues and they get yeah abundant uh, so there are some uh, topics or questions uh, say can you do this or look at this and and then we ask for feedback as editors um, and yeah we don't get any feedback from that um, so uh, we, this is a kind of a pointer if we ask for feedback is to be able to tackle your topic uh, and in a good way uh, and therefore we try to highlight this in a way in the various ways but if we tackle feedback requested to it as label we really want to have feedback because otherwise we cannot do anything with it uh, we we need continuation on it um, as well we will be a bit more strict sir, on that is that after a while, if this feedback doesn't come and it's nobody is reacting to it, uh, so the the issuer, we will start closing these inactive is, uh, issues. Uh, so so far we have been very careful about doing that because it indicates as well uh, some future work or some attention that we can bring to the community and maybe there's something onto it. Uh, but in order to today, we have 85. Uh, open issues, you will not see the, them anymore. Uh, so we hope with the new release it's, uh, as well to close it to reduce this number. But as well, uh, if that piles up again, then you don't see those issues anymore. And then they stay open for a long while and we don't know what to handle with it. So we will close them. So it's bits that you know that we are doing, we will do some cleanup activities and that if you file something, we will try to uh, give you feedback. Um, so there's still 
open issues, of course. Uh, so if it's open and it's under uh, no release, so we uh, we try to sometimes already to identify the release where it goes. In this case, uh, we have a release 3.0 that we want to create in the timeline. So those which are currently open and are aligned with this release are the ones we consider as within scope of to be aligned uh, to be applicable for our um, uh, release. Um, so, then still some statuses and labeling on it, um, what you will have. Um, so, I already mentioned feedback requests. So, we ask on these issues concrete feedback, otherwise, potentially they become inactive and they will be closed. We have a special status in this case, uh, feedback with us waiting for decision W3C is that uh, sometimes we have to move issues towards W3C or we consider that we are not the best place to discuss or make a first decision. So we put a waiting for and those might stay open quite long because the resolution time on, on W3C is another time scale as that we might follow as DKTP. Um, so this is a, a topic that you have to know. Uh, and then in the resolution process, when creating the draft, there's two statuses. Uh, resolution provided means that in the issue we have described a resolution proposal. This is, are you happy with it? Yes or no, as a as, uh, as, as partner in, 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 in the issue, then you can confirm or whatever do it, uh, but you know that this will be normally taken up into the draft, but it has not been yet done. If it gets the status fixed, it means it is in the draft and normally it will be closed. And the discussion will not continue. We have two postponements uh, into it. Uh, sometimes uh, it's just an information question or say how to handle this or something like this. Then we will say won't fix because yeah, we cannot do anything about it. It just was an information question, something like this. But we will close them anyhow uh, after some iterations, after some point in time. And some will be labeled for future work, meaning that we don't see them fit anymore in the current release and for the future. Having done that, so having processing this, all these issues, uh, getting to the status fixed and uh, and status won't fix and future work, then it's uh, we can create at some point in time a release. And as usual, we will then close all the issues that are in scope, assign them uh, a new label release with the appropriate version number and a date of the release so that you can find them back um, and we close them of course uh, and then they disappear out of the open list so then we have a cleaner list for you as a community a smaller list to follow uh, and with this ability of having this draft release we are probably able to iterate quicker through the, the list and to have a better view for you what is tackled and what is not tackled. Are there any comments or questions on this? Um, what are the suggestions for improvement? We are very open to hear from you what you have to say. Luther? Um, one general wish, if you uh, if you fix an issue, um, so you put the solution in the in the draft, could you state what you have decided to change also in the ticket? Because otherwise we have to search for the um, yeah search for the fix in the, in the in the new version. We will try to do as be our best. Sometimes it might be spread out across it and to it, but we'll try to do our best to give you a point to where the changes are. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Um, anyhow, at, when we create a release, uh, there is a change log where we uh, uh, yeah, we don't list all the issues in a, such as a blind list, but we just we try to describe in some coherent way what are the changes. Um, and 
certainly today and in, in the new release we have moved from an html no from a pdf uh, document to an html document there is a uh, a lot of uh uh yeah changes uh, and on on different places huh? so this you if we look if we compare the two formally limited but in expression, in how it uh, looks and feels, it is different. So it's quite different. Okay, so the question uh, whether this approach will be documented in GitHub for future reference. Oh, yes, we can write this out. That's no problem. So, yes, we can take these slides and turn them into a short note how this works. So, the labels are already in use for a while, but we, um, yeah. It would be good now, since we can do work with this draft and with these, we connect it more easily to it. And it's work. Okay, good. That's a good suggestion, and we write this out. And we will. It would be good for us to to include all the tick, the, the um, labels, uh, or at least the most common one that uh, we intended to use in order to facilitate our audience. Uh, uh, to see which are uh, how to, uh, for example, to uh, read what uh, we uh, are uh, annotated with the specific labels. Yeah, we'll do. We'll work on that, and we will try to improve over time. But this is, I think, a step forward to our community. So, um, in this list, uh, so in this processing, so this is on for webinars. Uh, uh, we would like to as well give you then an overview, uh, maybe on the next webinar. So this all has been happened just to know what we have we addressed. I'm not going to read all of them, but because these are the issues we have tackled, uh, which are either a bug fix or either where the resolution was clear and adopted, uh, either um, it is being discussed in one of the previous webinars and we already processed it. Uh, so these are, uh, yeah, under the stable, the status fixed. Uh, so in the, in the current drafts that we are going to publish or work on. Uh, um, one of the closure things, and so uh, there, there are still some open issues. Uh, so quite quite list. If you do remove all the fixed ones out of release, you still have about twenty five open issues, and many of them have to do with the alignment of DK three, mostly about our discussion topic on data set series. So before closing, because it has some writing impact and so on, uh, we want to share this. Uh, what is our resolution, or what is the outcome of these webinars uh, and the discussion with our us community uh, and what will be the outcome in the next candidates uh, uh, release that we will pro uh, uh, put for public review. So in last webinar, uh, so we had a number of topics and we had situations where we could use, uh, the question was, can you use data set series uh, and, and in this way? And in this way, so can data set belong to multiple data set series or data set series belong to data set series? We said in conclusion that this is possible, but you have to be careful and keep it simple as advice, but there's no restriction. You cannot do it. Huh? So it's on that sense. Um, um, there is uh, was a question on what are the additional properties for members of data sets that are member of a data set series. We don't have any collected, any specific ones that are needed. Uh, there's a bit of a high uh, usage notes, but that's, you can write it in a high level uh, note or guideline. Um, so this disappears. Uh, so we don't have any specific properties anymore or constraints on properties in that specific Profile entity profile, as Matthias uh, mentioned it earlier, uh, in the case that a data set is a member of a data set series. So we've done that. And we discussed on the inverse properties on W3C DCAT. We had uh, one conclusion for next that was clear that to remove it. Um, there was no clear consensus on the discussion on series members and in series. Um, and so what are, is our proposal to continue to make it say, okay, we follow W3C. Uh, 
because it imposes the use of in series and say, okay, you have to provide it. That we follow. We make that visible in our profile. Um, so we will remove series members as for now from the profile in that, but pose the question the W3C to consider if the inverse is not a better option to replace, to, to change the inverse. If that is that a good proposal, then we are aligned with W3C, with the minimal requirements of W3C. And yeah, uh, if you want, if you use series members, if you want to do it, you can do it, but you know anyhow that you have to provide in series to be conformant with W3C. And for a data exchange in DKTP, we can look to it and to take only look at the in series uh, uh, properties. And we, we can guarantee then as a community that this is complete and a uh, picture of everything that you uh, want to share of your data set series relationship with the data sets that are in the collection. So this is the proposal. Yeah. Okay, um, Matthias. Yeah, yeah. Matthias, yes. it's in, in the chat whether uh, this feedback will be um, well inco incorporated before DK3 is stabilized. Yeah, my question is basically: uh, Do you think there is a chance that we can get the discussion about this in V3C because we are running out of time? I think not. I think this will be for uh, DCAT 3.1 or something uh, very likely uh, to be the discussion on that. Yeah. Uh, we it was even uh, let's say we we bought or we got some time extra from W3C because my original expectation was that they had last year in April already been the candidate release. And uh, so I don't think that this request and this uh, analysis and we came out of it in our case, yeah, would even have, would be adopted. So I think it's good that we pointed out that we raised the topic, um, uh, but I doubt that we will have a change in it. Could I just have a related question to that? Uh, yes. Does you, I mean, we can all provide feedback to V3C individually, of course. Um, is there a, a special channel or so? Do, do we have a special relationship between SEMIC and V3C somehow uh, that kind of aggregates the experience from a lot of the members here? Does it have um, further weight? Not at the moment. So we 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 act as an individual at the moment to it, to W3C. Yeah. Of course, we come with in our community. This has been discussed and so on. This is a topic, but it's we it's not uh, uh, the weight of or let's say is the weight of my own single voice. Me, Jacob, you, whatever uh, other colleagues uh, that would file the issue. And then we can react to it, of course. And if we push it together as a community with these several voices, then probably this will raise up. Okay, so uh, are we going to vote on this issue? I, I see that Fabian has Fabian. raised his hand. Ah, right. One sec. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, my video. One second. Ah, hi. Hello. I have a question. I'm, you know, that I'm with Data Europa and we are trying to implement also data series now. So in the last weeks, we went into this very deeply also. And this issue actually took a while for me to understand it. Um, but still, maybe here we can still, you can tell me what the issue is, because as far as I still understand, DCAT does not forbid us to use um, serious member. We can add whatever we like. And if we yes. like serious member, we can we can add it also from our point of view. 
it would be very good to have this inverse property because, for example, we have for years now issues that, for example, the data set has no inverse catalog property in DKMAP, which is sometimes complicated to implement. You need to have, find sometimes ways to find out what data set, what catalog it belongs to. And if we remove this here now, we will have same issues on a implementation level. Although we still can edit, it's up to us. We can use properties, whatever we like, but I'm still in favor of leaving is this as is. I like it like this, or we like it like this. And I don't see the real issue here. That's so, the, my opinion. Yeah, so what happens, so the thing is, is, is let's say, what is the, the topic is that W3C says, if you use series member, you also have to provide in series. Yes. Uh, so you are not a valid DCAT exchange if you only use a series member. That is what DCAT says. Maybe, but they will not prosecute us. No, 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 no. I don't. Uh, <laughs> I know, no, I know. it's, um, I would still, if we remove it now and just say, okay, because then we maybe we will never get it in again, but, or maybe it will take months or years to get it in again. So it would be good to maybe leave it now and yeah, try to solve so, it uh, later. In the, 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 the only, Thing is, and this is where it's, it becomes then trickier, um, um, uh, is that the issue uh, it takes, uh, um, whatever I would say, that, that we as DCAT AP uh, have to decide if series member is mandatory or not. Uh, if, uh, if we decide that, we say to our community, if you want to be DCAT compliant, you have to provide two properties as a consequence, always. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, that is what, it, it's not a free choice uh, uh, to that. So the, the we are a bit of catch 22 in, in with the statement from the WDC um, uh, that they have chosen a preferred inverse property. Uh, and I've not left this to the community and say, okay, choose how you organize yourself and the other one should be derived. Uh, uh. Okay, but then if you say, okay, I understand, but then, okay, is something uh, speaking against making both properties mandatory? Because this would also decrease implementation effort. If you, if you know, okay, it's a series, those things are mandatory. You will find them. And, um, that's, that's something we can say. If we say that series member is mandatory. Yeah, yeah, so in case you are expressing a data set series and you want to relate it to a data set, then series member is mandatory. The other one will come automatically. Yeah, well, we have to, to bind them together. Uh, that's an option. What I will do then, uh, in, in time's sake, uh, uh, is we can make this proposal, uh, but I would, uh, on GitHub to vote further on, but I would maybe, can we do it now maybe just for the community here? Say, okay, both, uh, so if you will type it in. Uh, but yeah. wait, but I, I think there is an, an issue about what is the purpose still? I think we need to agree what is the purpose for having it? Is it to yeah. allow you to bring together data sets from multiple catalogs into a series? Is that the scenario you want to support to, to make that easier or more clear? Or is it some efficiency of looking up what is in one data series? For yeah, us, I, it's efficiency. For us, it's just it's it's basically implementation efficiency. Right. To, okay. I also but make if, it very clear for end users, for data publishers. Uh, I I I I've already the feeling if it's like this now with not mandatory and maybe you can have a series, maybe you can have in series. We will have kind of chaos maybe in the next years. No, so it will be not maybe in series. It will be if you if you want to create a relationship with a data set and a data set series, we follow W3C and it will be in series. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
you, that's the, the mandatoriness of use. So this is the proposal. Huh? There's a reason what uh, we only, we, the, the more, let's say, um, natural choice for us as community would be in, in that way, series member and not in series. Huh? Mm. Uh, in that statement. So there will be always a property in series that will be present. If you don't have it, then it will be a data set with without a data set series without the data sets in its collection. It will be empty. So, so just a comment to Fabian. If, if I had a comment in one of the issues, I called it efficiency triples. Mm -hmm. Nothing prohibits you from providing additional triples uh, in your own namespace. Uh, maybe in a harvesting step or something that is useful for you to do efficient uh, queries. Mm. No one will kill you for that. No one will understand them, but that doesn't matter. You will understand them and then you can find things. We do that exactly in the Swedish data portal. I don't think we even remove them before we export them to the European data portal and they haven't killed us yet. So it should be fine. <laughs> yeah, you, you're right. You're right. It's, you, we can do that too. I'm just... Um... Yeah, I'm always, our experience is the more strict it is, the better it is, is for us. You know, that's our, always our experience. Like, okay, make it mandatory, it helps us. That's our simple. In this opinion. case, it's yeah. mandatory in sense of if you want to relate a yeah. data set with a data set series or a data yeah. set series with a data set, use in series as defined by W3C. Mm -hmm. yeah? So this is why it word imposes. Uh, so it imposes. We have to use for that case the relationship. So can we still stick to the original proposal then? Yes. And can I just say only. something? Can I just say something? Uh, so uh, I was disconnected for some time. So I don't know if this was uh, brought up, uh, and I also didn't uh, follow the discussion on GitHub on this specific topic. But uh, did did it came up the proposal that it could be recommended so it's not mandatory but we could say that this is recommended too it's not optional it's between optional and, and mandatory right so we could say no, no, it's, it's 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 mandatory in the case you want to express a relationship between a data set series and a data set that is in the collection of the data set series then you have to use in series so it's in series is, is mandatory for sure, but I'm talking about the inverse property. Uh, if that ah, can be recommended, but yeah, but that's basically that's we are saying that it's 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 people should provide it for use. I mean, if they don't, then then it's different. But basically, basically we are we are suggesting that they do this. You know, it's it's a strong suggestion. We are not. It won't uh, fail the validation, but with just with a warning or something. You know instead of an error. Tengar, if I understand it correctly, you are proposing that uh, DKTAP says that it is recommended to uh, state this information uh, in a duplicate way, because uh, there will be in series and series member, which, is, which can be viewed also as inefficient. Uh, and that's yes. why the proposal here is to stick with what W3C proposes and um, therefore removing the series member from the project. Uh, and leave it to the implementers can, to do the but, but efficiency. But the point is that we can, we can make, we can say, I know it's inefficient, but it's useful, <laughs> you know? So uh, that, that's the, the, the trade-off. Do you want to make it useful for querying or, or not? And then we can say that we, we support this. Uh, we recommend it that you use it, but it's up to you. It's not mandatory. So that that's my proposal. Uh, yes, of course, in series you have to use it. That's mandatory because that's that's what what uh, what uh, W3C uh, DCAT says, right? But but uh, about the series member, we could say this: the inverse property is recommended. So that would be an alternative, right? It's that's my su suggestion. Yes, so that's a proposal that's kind of that contradicts this one. Uh, mm -hmm. So maybe you should vote on both um, just to get the feeling of the community. And since we are pressed uh, on time and we still have some issues to, to do, could we now uh, have the votes on uh, this proposal as it is? So removing series member from the profile, uh, please plus one, uh, I agree, minus one, I disagree.
I see plus ones only so far. Still only plus ones. If you're unsure, leave zero. That's that's but just to if you want to say something in that case. Okay, so now we have roughly the same amount of plus ones and zeros. Okay, well I would go for it for that instead of if it's neutral then you're not against. Uh, so if you have not a strong against into it, then we know where, where to go. Uh, no way. Uh, so for example, my zero is that I'm not against that. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, but, but again, I would consider some alternatives. So not, not removing them fully, but, but uh, specifying that it's, it's optional or, or, or rec uh, recommended, you know, that's, that's uh, well, why I, I didn't, I didn't give a minus one. Uh, I didn't so say that. let's leave it that for the next uh, release or the discussion. So uh, the goal is as well to close and to sure. be able to have a release. Uh, so because otherwise we continue the discussion and we yes. don't have uh, a release. Uh, I, I get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, indeed. It's not okay. prohibited. Okay. Uh, indeed, as Matthias mentioned, it's it's correct. Removal is not prohibiting. Uh, Okay, so I, can, uh, I think we can say that uh, this uh, proposal is uh, agreed on. Uh, and uh, if there is a future issue where we really need to use member for a specific use case, uh, please feel free to open another issue and uh, we'll discuss it further then. Thank you very much. So it was good that we come to it. So what is with the alignment? I just, just want to summarize. After all our discussions, including this one we just had before, uh, we looked at it and we see that the class data, C, uh, a data set member of a data set series has become empty. It's not present anymore in the sense of has no additional constraints. Um, and therefore, uh, our proposal is not to introduce for now as we don't have uh, we looked around in other profiles a need for this additional subclass. So if, and this is the question, if you, to you in your case, need this additional subclass that we have in the current candidate release, so a data set that is a member of a data set series and you want to express additional constraints about it, if you have it, raise it, come to us. So we might then reintroduce it for an, as an anchor, but at this moment we don't see it and we will remove it. So the conclusion of this is, is that this class will disappear from the current candidate release uh, and uh, will be swallowed uh, into the CAT AP dataset. Is it clear? Huh? Uh, that uh, this is what's going to happen. So if you have in your profile a need, please inform us uh, or come to GitHub or, uh, to us on that. Otherwise, this will be the major change in the alignment process. Okay, there are a few open issues. I will, for the time being, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, how much time do we have? Uh, quickly look. 10 minutes. Um, so I have two topics when I want just to have an introduction. I will not go then to an open discussion, but it's the introduction uh, here in, during the webinar is to enable discussion on GitHub. Uh, so the, the goal was anyhow, introduce the topic better, make it cleaner so that we can get your feedback. Uh, and in this case, unfortunately, it will be only on GitHub. Um, so, we announced and we discussed in the previous webinar on the property agent type and we moved the definition from a type that an agent makes a catalog or a data set available to the nature of the agent in the new. Because then the role 
of publisher is disappearing from the definition and it becomes more neutral. Huh? So this was an adopted change. If we look and then uh, we look at it a little bit further, what it has a further effect, and then we see in the code list that we propose to be used for this property in the context of an agent, we use ADMS publisher uh, type. Um, what is the code list uh, for that? I don't know why this, uh, this seems to be switched around. So this uh, is the current code list. If you have used it, you should be familiar with it. And you see in the middle publisher type. So we removed publisher type from the definition, but in the code list it's back again. Uh, so the question is, is this aligned? Can we align? And then we, we see that if we look to deeper to the code list, that we need to step up a bit here into the quality of the code list and add some definitions which are not present, etc. Um, so question, what's next? Our proposal was last time, can we move it to a new code list? Uh, the legal entity form based on the Glyph international uh, form, uh, uh, legal forms, in which you can find uh, an example over here. So, which is now currently in public, uh, pub officially published. You can find and you can express with this code list the exact nature, typology of an organization as it exists in your country. It's bound to the legal system in every country. So you find uh, uh, the uh, the legal form here limited uh, uh, availability, a liability company is bound to a particular country. So you, you can use it uh, in that case. Now, no, it is, okay, the question is, um, um, well, so if we, uh, yeah, if we apply this, then we see a challenge. The ADMS publisher type uh, is somehow present in the Glyph, but not entirely. So we have to do some additional work. And it is well to point out that we, since there is a member state specific identifier for each of the types, there's no uh, natural harmon EU harmonization out of it. So you this aggregation level is over there. It's, it's, it's lost in some way. So what is the challenge? And there's a question to you. What is a good matching code list in this case? Is there anything need for what do I use this code list? Huh? Mm -hmm. Because I know from the DGAT Health that they have for instance, other interests in other types of organization like hospitals, biobanks, which are not present into it. So uh, there's what is the kind of the right matching uh, code list? And is this one the right matching one? Our next question, of course, is legal form an alternative candidate? Do you see that as an alternative candidate? And the last option, and this we still want to bring this to the, uh, as a proposal to the table as an option, is that we drop the use of this ADMS publisher type code list, the mandatory use of it, um, in sense of because, yeah, it's the, we want to have the quality higher up, uh, but it cannot be used in all cases and so on. So the option might be to drop it at all. Um, so this is in short what we wanted to express. I hope that this was now more clear what it is the objective about and what it, why we came to the matching and the, the new code list proposal. Okay. Matthias, do you have a quick comment? Otherwise, please express it in GitHub. I just don't understand why we need to change it. The, to a speci country specific, I agree with the comment in GitHub already. Okay. Well, Jakub, I think. Yeah. So the, the question now is, I don't have, uh, so I don't know what is a supranational organization. I don't have a definition for it. So I cannot give a definition for it. It's, we have only labels for it at the moment. Um, so it is 
uh, used today in ways that has no relationship with somehow yeah, who decides what it is. Huh? It is your interpretation as a publisher on where to make it. Huh? Yeah. But that is not unique for this code list. That's the same for other code lists as well. So sure. But that's a bigger that's a bigger topic. That's maybe a bigger topic, but I want to raise it because here I don't know if uh, what is the use. We have publisher type into it as well. Uh, so you see the name into it, the request, original request, remove publisher out of the definition. And then we give a code list with publisher into it, the definition. Uh, so I'll try to accommodate to it. Huh? So I hope this is clear where it comes from. I understand that you feel there's no need to change. It's workable. Huh? It does its job. That's a good point. Huh? Uh, uh, but we have to see what is, uh, let's say, alternatives and better approaches to it. I you know, see that Matthias is already uh, giving a comment of mandatory use or only optional. Um, okay, I'll go to the other issue to introduce and to continue on the discussion on GitHub um, um, for the time being. So we had this topic and there were some discussions uh, on in, including the the participants in uh, the raised issue uh, in in GitHub, so Matthias and Agar. Um, this was the original proposal, and I want to point out what why it's the where the proposal comes from. If you look into DCAT, then you see on the right hand side that uh, the organization of the properties uh, is now as follows. There is a DCAT catalog property, which is a sub property of DCAT resource, which is itself a sub property of DCT has parts. And W3C says, okay, yeah, try to use these properties uh, and uh, we use them in the, in the right semantics. And if we look to the definition of DCAT catalog, it says a catalog that is listed in the catalog and has a range. DCAT catalog. So this is the definition of the property DCAT catalog. Now, if we look to DCAT EP in the semantics, we use a property which is mapped on DCT has part, having as range DCAT catalog, and having as definition a related catalog that is part of a described catalog. So in my feeling, the two definitions are very similar. The two formal restrictions being scoped to the range being a catalog are very similar. So now it's our question uh, historically, because this is a very old property from DCAT AP1, huh? already from there. And back then DCAT catalog as property didn't exist. Huh? Uh, and so this is, does it all correspond with each other? Huh? Um, so my question is, where is the difference? What is why we cannot change it? And I had the feeling, and this is uh, just an expression of a feeling, that it had to do with the ability, yes or no, that we can add the orange uh, arrow in one case and in not in the other case through the aggregated catalog. Huh? Um, so again, I yeah. No, see you, Matthias. You uh, adding uh, topics in, uh, in chats into the GitHub. Can you formulate it uh, uh, clearly in the GitHub uh, so that we can see what is the why we cannot change? What is the use case? Yeah, to it? because I, I did uh, that already just before the meeting. Sorry, I should have okay, done it sorry. earlier. Yeah, okay, I didn't look into the issues. That's my fault. No, that's good. Thanks. So uh, that's that's a topic that we have to discuss and to see where the difference is, uh, where is the connection. Uh, uh, okay. And then uh, I want just to raise attention to two issues, uh, which we asked feedback from. Uh, is there any additional reason to change the label uh, for change type? 
So this was one of the previous we asked for feedback for it, but we didn't receive any feedback. And uh, we asked as well, this was one of the conclusions of the long discussion on access rights code list, if there was a need for additional codes in service uh, for a data set service separate from a code list uh, for which is currently be used for uh, data sets. Do we need def different codes, yes or no? or alternative definitions for the existing codes. So we don't have got any feedback on that. So I would just want to ask you to come to it because otherwise we will not change the code list into the next release. Uh, so we will not do the change, but postpone the change to a next release. Uh, so this is the same for this one. Uh, so if we don't get a lot of feedback on it, we will postpone the change and eventually close the issue just if there's nobody further on reacting to it. Okay. Uh, futures, uh, leave it open. So I think we can wrap up now uh, with this. So I hope with the issues open, if we have tackled, still some work to do for the community to get the feedback, which we can handle prior our release. If not, it will be moved to after the release. Um, I don't know, Pavlina, do you would like to, uh, to do this? Huh? Yes, I will do that. So, what are the forthcoming uh, steps always in line uh, with uh, the cut? Uh, until the end of uh, this uh, month, uh, we have the draft of ESA. Uh, from the 1st of February we will, and until the 15th of February, we'll have uh, the start and uh, the end of the public review so that uh, the intention is uh, and the goal is uh, to final, uh, to uh, have the final release uh, for the CAT uh, AP in the, 20, the 22nd of February. Uh, uh, in my humble opinion, uh, oh, I think that uh, for uh, during these uh, three webinars, uh, we have uh, tackled uh, uh, the majority of uh, issues, and, uh, and we proposed uh, uh, during this uh, uh, webinar uh, to find a more uh, effective uh, and efficient uh, way uh, to tackle the uh, huge, the important amount of uh, uh, issues that are raised uh, along the, uh, the time. Uh, um, uh, with uh, during uh, for uh, the KTP, uh, why we think uh, that uh, the KTP uh, releasing this in uh, uh, in February is important. First of all, as I said in the beginning, uh, and it was also a discussion with uh, uh, under the context of uh, data spaces. It is important uh, for us uh, to um, have a stable release. Uh, uh, but also uh, to use uh, this uh, release for uh, future steps. So what are the future steps? Uh, we, uh, during uh, the release of uh, DKTP for high value data set uh, and in discussion with the Spire community, uh, uh, we um, uh, we identified a strong interest uh, regarding uh, GeoDKTP and how DKTP and Geo, its extension of uh, GeoDKTP uh, can uh, 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 meet the needs and uh, for uh, uh, mapping the different uh, uh, specifications and the different needs uh, that uh, are coming uh, uh, from the inspired directive, uh, the uh, high value data set uh, regarding the geospatial uh, information. So uh, it is uh, our intention uh, to start uh, um, working uh, with um, uh, the geospatial uh, community uh, to try to investigate uh, the needs and uh, see how we will uh, uh, meet uh, uh, the different uh, uh, worlds. Uh, this is uh, but uh, what I also I said in the beginning uh, that, uh, under the context of also the, the data spaces, it is important for us uh, uh, to set up uh, the rules uh, and uh, come up with a specific uh, uh, guidelines on, on how we are uh, conducting a profile. This is uh, why uh, what we are uh, going to address uh, uh, during the style guide webinar uh, that um, also um, it will take place uh, the 6th of February. We will highly appreciate uh, uh, if you can uh, join us in, in order to further uh, elaborate uh, and uh, agree on uh, the rules uh, of um, our profiling, uh, uh, all the profiling uh, issues. So, as we promised, uh, it was uh, that we will um, uh, 
uh, uh, we will create uh, the different uh, for the uh, the proposals uh, that uh, we have uh, um, uh, presented uh, in the profile uh, for the profiling. Uh, we will uh, create the dedicated uh, um, uh, uh, issues uh, into GitHub. So we will highly appreciate uh, um, your uh, feedback on uh, this, uh, uh, which will be also be used as a, a fruitful uh, uh, input for the webinar uh, on the sixth. Uh, of uh, February. Uh, we listen to you on what do you have to say. We have uh, um, uh, we uh, um, uh, noted down uh, your proposals as well as uh, your concern and several uh, uh, issues such as uh, uh, how to tackle with the GitHub uh, and how we will uh, uh, propose the release uh, the new way of uh, working with the GitHub uh, uh, issues. And uh, having said that, that uh, we would like, uh, I would like personally to thank you for attending uh, this uh, meeting and looking forward to seeing you in the forthcoming uh, ones. Uh, stay tuned and uh, please provide uh, feedback uh, in, on GitHub. Have a great afternoon. Much and see you next time. See you the 6th of February. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.